Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I am the Crypto Crow. I am here with one of the first uh, interview guests I've had in quite some time since I moved to Florida from Puerto Rico. Uh, he is the founder of what I believe is ultimately going to be one of the biggest new platforms in the crypto space, Jordan Freed with NFT.com. Uh, I will say this, this is going to be, this is, it's, it's a paid segment in a sense, but um I'm not just doing this. I'm definitely not doing the interview because it was paid. Normally I would turn something like that down. I'm legitimately into this project in a very, very big way. And quite frankly, the only way I could learn more about it is going to be by interviewing this guy. So that's why we're here. Um, Jordan, welcome. Uh, really, really glad to have you. Can't wait to start picking your brain. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Excited to, uh, excited to start talking. Uh, so, I guess, where do we even begin on this? I mean, this NFT.com, I mean, first of all, I have a buddy who he made his first million dollars flipping domain names when he was a teenager, okay? And uh, still friends with the guy, and, and he sends me questions about crypto here and there, but now he's doing, you know, seven-figure domain flips. I mean, it's insane what he's been, uh, what he's accomplished. And it sounds like your background is very similar, where you've basically been kind of flipping domain names the majority of your life until you finally get nft.com like that's like that's a pretty big accomplishment in and of itself like what uh, i feel like I, there's i'm envious in a way but i'm not because you got a big 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 palace to fill full of fun stuff now uh but yeah. how did this all come about yeah, listen, I've always loved domain names. I've never flipped one in the pure sense of like, I bought a domain name to speculate that the name would become valuable and then sold it for more money. Like it sounds like what your buddy does. For me, I always perceived domain names to be like owning real estate in Manhattan a hundred years ago. The internet is still early. It's in its infancy, right? You know, you could only start registering domain names like 25 some years ago. Um, I really, uh, well, you know, more, a little bit more than that, like call it 35 years, right? So if you believe in real estate and you believe in dot coms, I don't really buy the dot XYZs and the dot IOs and the dot orgs and the dot nets, but I really love a good dot com. I love buying really good brands and then figuring out amazing businesses to put behind them. I'm a junkie. Like my drug of choice is building businesses. I love the uncertainty of being able to put something there. Um, one of my first businesses was uh, a, 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 a market around, a, an MMORPG, a massive multiplayer online role-playing game called RuneScape I've where I it. sold secondary, uh, you know, we would sell RuneScape gold points outside the game. Now that's totally okay in 2022 around things like Decentraland it and Axie then. Infinity and, you know, other communities, but it's totally not okay. And wasn't okay in 2000, a decade before Bitcoin, when I was 12 years old and got in trouble by Jagex limited, a multi-billion dollar game company behind the game RuneScape who literally sued me for violating their intellectual property and selling RuneScape gold points. So I always, I had the great fortune, man. I'm one of 10 kids. I'm a boy from Buffalo with a chip on both shoulders. And, you know, my dream was always to get the heck out of Buffalo. There wasn't a lot going on. It's a dying steel town. Still love my Buffalo bills and still love a good, you know, a good a dozen chicken wings every now and then. But, um, I wanted, um, I wanted to leave. I wanted to go see the world. I wanted to build amazing businesses and have millions of people use my products. So another domain I bought was buffered B U F F E R E D.com. We ended up building an amazing VPN company around it. Think like buffering your internet connection is buffering until you get that high speed internet there. Uh, Jason in, uh, in, in Florida, your internet may be buffering from time to time, but I built a VPN service called buffered. Um, where we help users bypass geographic restrictions, unblock the American Netflix library in Europe, um, you know, reclaim their internet privacy um, or their geopolitical freedom and bypass censorships. We help Chinese people access Gmail and Google in China. Um, we help Turkish people when the government uh, started blocking American news outlets. We help them access American news outlets. So you can um, help American you know, people watch foreign films on Netflix. They're not supposed to access. It, well, exactly. <laughs> it's funny it, with the same. I think Netflix will probably clamp down on this now that their stock is, you know, corrected fifty billion dollars in market cap in the last three days. So they'll probably clamp down on the password sharing and the ability to use like the same username and password to, you know, uh, country John as as it's as it's called but uh yeah loved love building businesses there so actually i sold that vpn company i got, 
while running that VPN company is how I found Bitcoin. So I found Bitcoin right place, right time, man. I mean, our customers started emailing us to take it as a payment method, I learned about it in 2013, went all in on it. Um, and then join the space full time. For those that know me, you know I'm part of the founding community of Hedera Hashgraph, HBAR. Um, you know, after selling that business, I poured a lot of my new liquidity and became an investor in a company called Swirls, which had created this unbelievable Hashgraph technology. And then, you know, helped convince them to do a public ledger based on Hashgraph, uh, which is today called Hedera and HBAR's a unicorn out there and is you know still growing and doing well in the market. So did that for the past four years. Um, it's funny we actually bought the name Hedera from a guy who was a, a botanist, a plant, uh, a plant guy in the Netherlands. Hedera describes a vine, which is fitting in that um, Hedera is a graph. It's literally not a blockchain. It's not a, a, a chain of blocks. It's a directed acyclic graph is the data structure. And this guy, you know, Hedera describes like a type of vine or type of like IV that grows. So um, it was a fitting name. We, we gave him, we gave him some H bar. Um, he's done well on that H bar. We bought that domain name from him. Always loved a good domain name. You got to have Hedera. I have like 90 gotta have... domains myself, man. I've been collecting them for decades. So yeah. I and Jason, it. I know you left this Island cause this is Puerto Rico behind me for anyone looking, but I also own Puerto Rico.com. I bought oh, that one wow. and no one, yeah, no one, no one, you know, no one wanted it. No one was doing anything with it. Now I paid a pretty penny for it. It was okay. a seven figure domain transaction, but I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm bullish on this place. I do think the user experience of new people moving to Puerto Rico needs to be improved. I'm sure you've shared your story, but, uh, there's, you know, there's definitely I, pros and cons. There's pros, there's, 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 there's pros and cons. Uh, but uh, yeah, always loved a good domain name. So of course, when I got, you know, found blockchain, have this experience, um, I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a failure, a domain failure first, and then I'll tell you the NFT.com success. I um, failed very publicly in buying crypto.com. You can go back and look at my Twitter. Um, if you go back to 2017 and look at my tweets or search my name in crypto.com, uh, I contacted the owner of crypto.com in 2017 and offered him millions of dollars to buy uh, uh, crypto.com. And uh, he turned me down and did it in like a rude way. He was mean. He was like very public about it. And he was like, the domain is not for sale or whatever. Uh, clearly that was a lie because clearly he just wanted more money. And then there was this group of people that did an ICO called Monaco. If you remember the Monaco card, which was a credit card or a debit card rather that would let you debit your crypto balance. That's what they raised money on. That team clearly promised him some coin and some cash and something on top. I don't know the exact terms of the deal. I got outbid for crypto.com, which kind of like made me angry, gave me a little bit of a chip. I'm like, oh man, I really wanted crypto.com. I lost it. And of course, bitcoin.com is taken. Blockchain.com is already taken. It's building real business. And I'm like, man, I really like, you know, I need a good domain name, but I'm really busy building Hedera at this point. I'm bu busy building Hedera. And while I was building Hedera, the Hedera governing council and the people I was working with, I would always tell them, I'm like, guys, I'm a junkie. I'm going to you know, be, be making investments in companies on the side. I'll be buying up domain names. While I was at Hedera, I bought hbar.com. Hbar is the name of the token. So I own hbar.com. Still figuring out what to do with that. And, you know, we definitely want to build a business around it. Um, and I bought cbdc.com. high bar business. That's it. What's that? A gymnastics high bar business. That's what you're... <laughs> <laughs> that's an idea right that's an idea uh and big, big uh, in that, i'm sure i bought cbdc.com that's central bank digital currency oh my but if god I fail, are you serious but yeah but if i fail with that i'm just gonna start a cbd business just kidding but you could right <laughs> <laughs> something um, tells me somebody's gonna come after that domain and probably not pay you for it. <laughs> yeah, I let's hope that doesn't happen. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I uh, love them, but they're not for sale. So if you're listening to any of this, I'm like, yo, Jordan owns some sick domain names. I'm not even kidding you. There's no amount of money you could give me for any of these. I've already done well. I'm part of the 2013 Bitcoin cohort. So it's like, I don't do what I do for money at this point. I really just love building products. I love that feeling right before you launch a product of, are people going to love it? Are they going to hate it? If I love that feeling, that uncertainty is like, you know, that's my drug of choice. It's, it's just, like I love educated working. gambling. Is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, it is, but it is gambling. It is right. starting a business is a gamble. Is. Like I'm a gambling addict, but I'm an entrepreneur addict, which is like, 
the rawest form, pure blood, like pure bread. It's just, I never did it because, you know, when I was growing up, there was no entrepreneurship or hustle porn. There was no Gary Vaynerchuk all over like Instagram telling you to hustle, 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 hustle. I did it to get out of Buffalo guys. I did it because I was one of 10 kids and I wanted a new pair of Jordans or a new <laughs> pair of jeans. Right. I just, I wanted to take care of myself. So I wore new balance um, before they were a thing. So I, I, I get your still like new bit. balance. I do I too. Mean, That's what I'm saying. I, I, I had yeah. to wear them because they were cheap back then. Now they're a name brand <laughs> and they're still yeah. they're 100 bucks like everything else. Mm. They're like 25 so, or 35 bucks back in the day. Oh yeah. 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 I, I, that was my, that was my middle school, high school shoe for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, so fast forward to nft.com. I first talked about NFTs. We could probably dig up a video on YouTube about it. I did a panel on NFTs in 2018 and literally no joke, 10, 10, maybe 15 people were there, mm-hmm. but like in and out there, like, you know, listen to me talk, probably just didn't want to get up and we're checking messages that just rest their feet at the conference. Mm-hmm. And it was in one of those breakout rooms and no one cared. Um, and, uh, you know, that's just to say like, you, you anyone Most who got in when I got in, majority you to, to find value in something before they will. I so, think all real wealth was not made by being diversified. All real wealth was built by making a contrarian bet on something you strongly believe in when a yeah. lot of other people disagree with you. Like I did my bet on, yeah, my bet on Hashgraph, no one, no one would even pick up the phone to talk to me about Hashgraph in 2017. They would slam the door in my face. So like, why do we need Hashgraph? We have Ethereum. You guys are crazy. Um, but I believed in it. I put a lot of money into it. And yeah, my H bar is obviously worth a ridiculous fortune. So um, we we went all in on it and we wanted to make that, we wanted to make that successful. So um I, I felt that way about NFTs um, for a while. I wasn't in the, uh, but but I, I like to be on the picks and shovel side, right? For me with blockchain, that was like, okay, it, let's launch a layer one protocol. Um, for me with, you know, the VPN business, the picks and shovel, it's a tool. It's a tool that helps people do something online. Uh, and you know, with nft.com, it's really no different. It's like, Hey, can we solve the pain points? Can we solve some of the problems? Um, pay $2 million for the domain name, uh, negotiated for it. Uh, not that long ago, end of 2020 closed the deal January of 2021. Um, offers have been pouring in for, you know, many, many, many multiples of it. The domain is not for sale. We're not going to sell that domain name. Uh, we're going to lock the domain name up and we're going to build something amazing. Um, and it's not something that I own and it's not something that any company owns. It's something that we, as an ecosystem, we, as users need to be part of, it needs to be a true web three platform. So, um, yeah, that's. So getting into nft.com. So you got the domain and I'm assuming development has begun like this is you said we're gonna develop I, i'm assuming that it's already there's already a platform oh it's step. been underway for a it's been underway for a while okay, uh, i think development of fish uh, development has uh, had officially started i would say august september of 2021 okay. um where we actually started we actually started putting the whole uh, the whole platform together um you know, anyone who tells you they're going to be better than OpenSea on day one is lying to you. I think that a lot of people just don't realize how much work, how much effort, how much capital, how many people, how many hours have been spent building that that platform to where it is today. But if we actually just look at it, we got to recognize we're taking Web2 methodologies and we have a lot of Web2 companies that are putting lipstick on pretending to be Web3 companies. If you've raised venture capital, you're not a Web3 company. If you, uh, if you don't allow your users to help govern the platform, you're not a Web3 company, right? That's how things were done in 2010. That's not how things are going to be done in 2022 and beyond. Users can't be disenfranchised. Jason, you're a, you're a YouTuber, right? You probably know this better than most people. The YouTuber suffered from a major movement of demonetization that is you know, all too recent of a memory where YouTube unilaterally updated their algorithm where a whole cottage industry of people who depend on the revenue share from advertisements from their YouTube channels literally saw their income halved overnight from an arbitrary change. And they had no voice. Mm -hmm. They have no recourse. They, most YouTubers, they don't have seats on the board of directors of YouTube or Google. They don't have a say in how those platforms run. We now have technology that is getting to a point where it's stable enough and performant enough that we can operate better platforms 
platforms and re-architect the relationship that a user has with that platform. With NFT.com, we wanted to take that opportunity, this opportunity to re-architect that relationship and do it from the start. So let me get practical. Let's get in the weeds for a second. When you come and sign up for NFT.com, you'll be able to come and mint nft.com forward slash Jason. Now I say mint because in web two, you would go to facebook.com and type in your email and your password and you create an account and you click a little box that says you can take all of my data for the rest of my life and sell it to large multinationals that want to sell advertising to me. And okay, you can give me dopamine hits and make your products addictive. So I'm coerced to continue to like go down the scheme in this rabbit hole. With nft.com, we've rethought that relationship. You are going to mint nft.com forward slash Jason. That is your login credential. No more username and password. That token is your username. You own that page. You can now log in to nft.com forward slash Jason, and you can make that your gallery if you're a collector, your storefront if you're a creator. Uh, that is your identity. It's your Web3 primitive of what will eventually become a full Web3 social experience that integrates into a marketplace, and you have a voice in the platform. Now, if you are listening to this and you're like, I don't want to voice in the platform. I don't want to govern. I just want to make money. That's okay too. But you need an insurance policy. You need an insurance policy when demonetization, like what happened to YouTubers happen. You need an avenue or a promise that your voice is actually going to be heard and you have real control. And with NFT.com operating like a DAO will ensure that users, even if they don't care about governance today, if we as a team try to do something with the platform that becomes harmful and you don't agree with Jordan's vision, Jordan tries to become big, bad Jack Dorsey and start deplatforming sitting presidents and prime ministers and all the things like that, and you disagree with that, you have a voice. You have the ability to vote and reverse some of those decisions and to be able to stand up for yourself and the issues that you care about. And I think that is so important. What's more is what if we all used a marketplace where the 2.5% fee or the 1% fee, it didn't go to a bunch of VCs and you know, a sociopathic billionaire in his late thirties that is all powerful and more powerful than a president in some cases. What if it went to a community where that community could vote on where that goes? Hey, should we give developer grants to like girls who code? Hey, should we like give creator grants to people in developing economies and give them grants? Should we support Puerto Rican creators or Zimbabwe creators or people all over the world? We can we can operate differently. And I think that the way you structure that organization, that's, that's our vision with nft.com. So we, we, you know, um, well, I, I, I do, I, I kind of, uh, before we jumped on and hit record, I told you I'm not the CEO of nft.com. I'm the founder of nft.com. I'm an evangelist of nft.com, but literally if you have an nft.com profile or a Genesis key, you're the CEO of nft.com. You're the leader of the community. Um, and your voice will be heard. So I love the idea about, you know, building up like a, a Puerto Rico uh, coding center. You just couldn't schedule classes for Thursday. That would be the only problem there, I think. <laughs> uh, inside joke for those that uh, don't live in Puerto Rico or haven't been there. Yeah. Uh, nobody likes to do anything on Thursday for some reason. We always thought that was a joke. And then you schedule something like nobody shows up. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's a thing. laughs> so. We, 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 you know, I've, and I've watched other interviews you've done. I've seen a lot of different things that you've done and, and I hear the platform, the platform, the platform. I still don't know exactly what this platform is. I know the domain. I know millions of people are probably plugging this in to, you know, everything right now. And there's nothing there, but you know, the Genesis key and the, you know, get started. Here we go. What is the platform? Let's say I have slash, you know, Flash fart dust. What does that mean? Like, what am I doing on this platform? Is it like a yeah. Reddit style community? Is it an open sea style marketplace? Is it a combination of both? Yeah, is it it's Twitter? an open like what is it? Yeah, it's an open it, at, at start, it's an open sea style marketplace, right? What we really take issue with is the way we're operating in web three right now. We really reject the notion that you know creators are having the kind of relationship that they're having today. Before we even started to build, the first thing we did was meet with people who were creating these PFP projects, these profile picture collections, like the doodles, the apes, the world of women, crypto punks, me bits, right? Like all of these collections and to understand what the pain points and the problems are. You would fall off your chair if you had these conversations. Maybe you've had some of them. These people don't have account managers. They don't have a direct line to the CEO and CTO. They don't vest options or equity. They're totally on 
they're totally disenfranchised. No one gives a shit about them at OpenSea, which is ridiculous because OpenSea uses the volume that these projects generate, right? I mean, Bored Apes is like 10% of the entire volume on the platform and uses that to justify a $13.3 billion post-money valuation. I believe that we can operate differently. So first, how could we build a better OpenSea experience? What would that look like? Well, of course, you want to rethink how a user signs up. And I kind of explained that to you. Yeah, you're going to have a credential for how you log in. And yeah, you're going to have that profile. That profile, kind of like your OpenSea profile, is your gallery if you want it to be. It's a much better link in bio than OpenSea.io forward slash Jason Punk 6529 or whatever you want it to be. It's nft.com forward slash Jason. Put that as your link in bio, show people the NFTs that you've got. That's kind of cool. That's a little feature right there. But can we improve it? Can we make it a little bit better? Can we have that better creator experience? So changing the economics of it, that's a big part. We think that there's a data problem. So if you talk to any NFT collector or trader to be on the collector or trader side today, most of them have Dune Analytics open with rarity tools, with Trade Sniper, with a bunch of other extensions and tools to figure out the rarity of the various different NFTs that they bought. We've got a data problem. Data in NFTs is very fragmented. We think that there's improvements to be made with data. And then I kind of reference Web3 Social. So when we talk about it, yes, OpenSea functionality and feature set, yes, data improvements. And yes, I do think that we can rethink social. I do think we need to rethink. I want to know what my friends are buying. Are my friends in the crypto world? Because I really only hang out with crypto people these days. Are my friends selling their apes for punks? Are they selling their punks for, you know, moonbirds? Are they selling their moonbirds to go move on to something else to NFT.com Genesis keys? What are people doing? Where are funds flowing? Of course, with proper privacy settings. What if we could rethink our relationship with Facebook or rethink how we use these platforms? What if we could rebuild that? So yeah, I'm not going to boil the ocean all at once. Anything I've learned about, you know, what it takes to be successful as an entrepreneur really required me to focus on doing one narrow thing and doing one narrow thing really well. We want to have a better NFT marketplace experience first and foremost, but if we could improve that profile experience and that data experience, and then eventually that social experience, I think we've got a killer platform here. And then to just way back up for a second, Crypto.com, blockchain.com, bitcoin.com. These are marquee, not just domain names, but marquee brands worth billions of dollars in some cases that have their names on stadiums. How freaking cool would it be if I'm part of LinksDAO? Shout out to anyone who's part of LinksDAO. I never golfed a day in my life, never played golf. I'm part of LinksDAO. I have a membership to a DAO that's trying to buy a golf course to make it one of the top 100 golf courses in the world, or at least in the US. And it's an amazing organization. Shout out to Wagme United. I'm not part of Wagme United, but I like what they're doing to try to buy an English football club or a European football club. Pretty cool concept. Shout out to Krause House. I'm not part of Krause House, a collective of people trying to buy the Chicago Bulls. What if by having an nft.com genesis key we all came together to try to build a better platform what if we all came together as a community to try to say hey we're the beta testers we're the co-founders of this platform we're the we're, we, you know, we really want to beat open sea this is what it's going to take and it's not just jordan and his team doing it but it's all of us doing it it's all of us together collectively trying to build that up that's the ecosystem we're trying to create. That's why we're launching the way we're launching, because I can't do it alone. With you and with your community and with our community together, we may have a shot at buying that golf course. We may have a shot at buying that football team. We may have a shot at buying the Chicago Bulls. What we can do together is so powerful, which is why so much about crypto is about community building. But what we are trying to do right now is launch all of this, birth the genesis of it, which is why we're doing this April 26th, this Genesis key sale to start all of this, where there's 10,000 Genesis keys. It's not just another NFT drop. It's not. I promise you it's not. This is the first NFT that can be used to mint two profiles on a new platform that I'm betting Every single person listening to this is going to want to use over the next five to 10 years. You're going to, at some point, if you're not already pissed off at OpenSea, you will be. For the same reason that if you're not already pissed off at Amazon, trust me, you will be. And I'll tell you, you know who's the most pissed at Amazon? The people who depend on Amazon for their income. Mm -hmm. The people who drive. How many people out there depend on FBA, fulfillment by Amazon, 
as a way to make extra money. Jason, you know what happens to someone who really starts crushing it at Amazon? I know exactly. They get the reward. Going. They get oh, the yeah. reward of Amazon white labeling their product, competing with them, and running them out of business. Mm -hmm. They did it to Pampers. They white labeled diapers because they see that a lot of people use Amazon for diapers. They say, stop buying Pampers and Huggies. You buy ours. Mm -hmm. It's evil. This is what happens when you have a rent seeker in a marketplace. You cannot have a marketplace with a rent seeker. There needs to be a fee in the marketplace to prevent against freeloaders, but that fee needs to go to the benefit of the collective of the community. There's other ways to monetize it. I'm not a communist. I'm not trying to say we should all live on a commune and hold hands and sing Kumbaya. I'm a capitalist, a red-blooded capitalist like everyone else, and I really want to make a lot of money and build a lot of really exciting products and businesses. But what I am saying is that the way we architect web platforms in Web3 is going to be drastically different, and it will be for the benefit of the user. So we're kind of doing that with NFT.com Genesis Keys. Hopefully, you followed that. And uh, Oh, I'm following every follow word. That. I've done interviews in the past where I zoom out, I zone out, and I just let the person... I'm listening to everything because I'm, I'm trying to visualize where this is going to be in even a few years because the way i see it right now we're in a bear market so you're really laying the foundation for for you know the next bull cycle and and, and i mean this is my opinion the way i'm looking at it so you're basically you know you're putting the bricks down you're putting up the the scaffolding you're getting everything ready to go you're inviting the crew to start getting to work and by the time the market turns around and we start moving to the upside you're going to have a pretty solidly established basis on a domain that's already being plugged in, I'm sure. I, you know, well, like, I'm curious. I'm sure there's millions of people already. Plugged it's in ridiculous. It. I mean, the traffic before we did anything, we had a coming soon page with an email box. A hundred thousand emails were typed into that box, right? I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. I've never had something that had so much traffic before because we bought it at a time. I bought it at a time that was right before the hype cycle. It was literally, I couldn't have timed it better if I tried. I think so much in life is about timing. I think you're totally right. Like, is a correction coming? Is a bear coming? I'm not going to make like, you know, a prediction on where we are in that cycle, but I can tell you that the Bitcoin having is 700 some days away, right? So we're probably going to see a run up there. Do we go into a two year hibernation until then? Yes. But some amazing stuff was built in the last bear, right? Hedera was built in the last bear, right? Solana, Avalanche, Algorand, all what we now call like the Ethereum killers or the more performant protocols. We saw DeFi start to be birthed during that time and really come out in 2020, right? NFT really started you know propelling from like 2017 with just crypto kitties to like now where we are with this huge robust ecosystem right OpenSea started building during the bear right i mean they really started building 2017 2018 so build that foundation now absolutely right how freaking cool would it be if a DAO behind NFT.com decided, because it wouldn't be me making this decision, it would be all of us listening, decided to put NFT.com on a stadium. That's what, I, that, that's what gets me up in the morning. That's what I'm working towards. It's like, that would be so much fun to be part of. And if you like any of this, one, if you think I'm crazy, write in the comments that you think I'm crazy, right? I will take the critical feedback. I've been called some terrible things and I can handle it. I got thick skin. But if you like these ideas, you can subscribe to it and be part of it by having a Genesis key and joining the community, by helping lead the community. And if you think I'm a flaming idiot and your ideas are better than mine, still buy a Genesis key, join the DAO and say that in the DAO that my ideas are stupid and help me improve them, right? And I think that's what's so cool about operating in this form. The other thing I'll say is like, I'm not a DAO maximalist. For those listening and like who care about governance, you got to really think about it in two ways. And I'd go back to the formation of Ethereum because I think they really nailed this in the early days. Why is Ethereum Ethereum? There's a lot of reasons for it. But on the same day they registered the business entity behind the Ethereum Foundation as a non-for-profit Swiss foundation, they registered a company called Consensus. Right, you got two organizations. Consensus became the for-profit go-to-market company led by Joe Lubin that uh, started MetaMask, the wallet that we all use and many of us love. Right, and Fura, an application stack for enterprises to make API calls to the Ethereum network. Right, and you know, uh, bottle um, or or uh, batch transactions before sending them to the Ethereum network. Right, they built tooling to make using the Ethereum network um, uh, a, a better user experience for enterprises for businesses for startups consensus funded a lot of the early icos in 2017 they have a 
consulting arm that helps companies consult. Now, I don't have any stock in consensus whatsoever. So I'm not trying to like pump a company here. I'm trying to talk about the model. Here, you've got your DAO. You're kind of like in, in the Ethereum Foundation is not a DAO, but let's say it was run by one. I think you need the bifurcated model. You need a for-profit company that wants to commercialize the open source DAO. NFT.com is the open source DAO. It's open source in that its users govern it. It's open source, open license uh, from the code base. I don't think the value is in the code. It's not in the platform. Anyone can fork it. Anyone can see it, just like Uniswap. You need a for-profit company like what we are. We've got this company called the NFT company that is trying to commercialize that platform, trying to add value to it. Maybe that company is going out and doing business development, trying to get Google to do NFTs, or Nike, or Mattel with Hot Wheels and Barbie and G.I. Joe, or all of these major media companies try to get them in. And maybe you sell services to them that had help make that good. And that drives value to the DAO. That drives more users to the DAO. You need both. The reason you need both is businesses need entrepreneurs. Any people who can run fast, who are benevolent dictator-like and can make swift, fast decisions, get product market fit and build something in the market. You need the DAO to protect the users, to make sure that YouTube demonetization doesn't happen, to make sure that censorship doesn't happen, to make sure that people don't get arbitrarily deplatformed for politics, right? To make sure that people, um, uh, people feel safe and secure in using the platforms. I'm not trying to make political statements here. I just think that platforms have to run in a different way and nft.com is going to be part of what I believe is a brand new generation of platforms that adopt this model. We're not the first. Uniswap runs very similar to this, right? There's a DAO there. There's other examples, MakerDAO. MakerDAO's stablecoin die, right? It runs in this in this fashion. I think that there's going to be a massive wave of, of new organizations that adopt this as an operating model. So you've said a lot. And I'll shut up. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good for me. I get exactly what you're saying, but I think ultimately, uh, I, so anybody that watches this, um, I want to actually understand the specifics of the platform, not necessarily mm -hmm. the philosophy behind it. So we've yep. covered a lot of that, but you know, right now you're in this Genesis, Genesis key auction phase, right? And yep. you want people to understand why they want one of these, what role they actually stand to play. A lot of what you said sounds great to me. I get it. But let's just say I'm a, you know, a 25-year-old a athlete and and I am just getting into crypto. My buddy told me about this whole NFT.com thing and he used a yeah. bunch of buzzwords I don't understand. And yeah. but he's telling me I gotta get in on this. I gotta get on this is like getting into Reddit or OpenSea or anything at the ground floor. Um, you gotta get in it. Why? Why? Yeah. Uh, DAO? What yeah. the hell is a DAO? I don't know any of that stuff. What what does any of this stuff mean? Why do I actually care? Why do I want to get involved? And what does that mean to me over the next five years? Yeah, I think it's 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 you know, when you joined Facebook, let's say you went to Harvard when Facebook first launched, you had a Harvard.edu email address. I think getting a Genesis key right now is like having a harvard.edu email address, but as if having that harvard.edu email address made you uh, made you a co-founder of Facebook, literally gave you a seat on the board of directors, how that platform was run, and allowed you to capture value in various ways around it. Now, I'm not promising a return because it's really important that these NFTs, these Genesis keys, aren't classified as securities. So to be clear, what your NFT.com Genesis key actually allows you to do is be a co-founder of the Hedera community. I'm sorry, not Hedera community. That's, that's the last thing I did. A co-founder of the NFT t.com community um and uh to uh to help be a steward of the ecosystem you're able to mint two profiles nft.com forward slash jason or nft.com forward slash twisted times or nft.com forward slash whatever brand or whatever uh crypto crow or whatever you want it to be okay uh and own those if you want to sell those and be a domain squatter like uh like like your buddy is you can do that too you can sell your genesis key but having a genesis key means ultimately you're gonna have three nfts the genesis Genesis key itself, two profile NFTs, all of which are fully yours. You own them. You can sell them. If you believe in anything you heard me say on this call and you believe in this vision, then you can be part of that community. You're early beta testing new features. You're the first to get those new features. You're the first to vote on those new features. Those features are listing NFTs. They're buying NFTs, sell, uh, selling NFTs on the particular platform. It's access to new advanced data tooling that we want to roll out, and it's access to eventually 
Web3 social features to message, communicate, follow, and be part of that community. If you are a creator, this is probably something that will be of interest of you. If you're a collector, it's probably something that's of interest uh, interest of uh, to you. If you have an NFT already, it's probably something that you may want to take a look at. And if you don't have an NFT, but you are lucky enough to be alive in 10 years from now, which I certainly hope those of you listening are, you are going to own an NFT in that time horizon. So I still would suggest getting involved to educate yourself now and join that community. This community is really built to be for everyone. We you want to get to a platform that can have a billion plus users. So what if you, by having a Genesis key, controlled that community? You weren't just early and had a really cool handle, but you were early in that you're on the board. You're a decision maker. And if you want to sell that board seat via selling that Genesis key and selling that status in the community, you can do that. And I think that that that's what you're signing up for. That is what's happening right now. In the same way that when you sign up for LinkedIn, you're signing up to maybe buy a golf course. In the same way you're signing up for Wagme United, it's maybe we're going to go try to buy a football club. You are signing up to be on the board of directors of Twitter or on the board of directors of Facebook. You're signing up to come help lead a new platform. If that sounds fun for you, if you like playing SimCity growing up and business simulations and you like maybe Sim Farm or all these other things and you like building shit, come join us, come do this with us. If you'd rather just wait for us to build it and then use it when it gets to critical mass, you can do that too. But regardless, I think it's kind of cool and exciting. And there's another, you know, 35,000 other people or 33,000 other people in discord who think it's pretty cool, uh, in our community right now. And, you know, the reason shows like this are valuable is to help continue to snowball that, to help continue to get traction and build that ecosystem. The platform is valuable proportionate to the number of new users on it. You will be forced to use nft.com if all the collectors and all the creators are using that platform in the same way that you're kind of forced to use Uber because it's the fastest way to get a car, right? So you press the button. Question. Car shows up. One question. Um, as I understand it, you're building this platform initially on ERC20, but then you're looking yep. to migrate it over to Hedera, right? I wouldn't say migrate it over to Hedera. I would say if the platform, if I really mean everything I said earlier, right, that I'm not the CEO of it, then the user should be in control of what layer one protocols are supported. Oh, so today we're on. using. I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so let's say you love. Let's say you're listening to this and you love Solana. Like you absolutely love Solana, you're Solana through and through. And you really want Solana NFTs to be supported on NFT.com. The way you make sure that that happens is by having a Genesis key and making sure that NFT.com right after Ethereum supports Solana NFTs. If you're listening to this and you love Polygon, you love Polygon, your Cuckoo Bananas for Polygon or Avalanche or Algorand or Hedera Hashgraph HBAR or Cardano or whatever it is, if you care about the protocol, buy a Genesis key and make sure that your protocol is integrated. Jordan Free doesn't make that decision. You make that decision. That's the difference. Okay, so that is one of the key things you've said so far to me, because that is where I'm sitting here thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to have a Genesis key. Why do I care? And, you know, when I think of NFT.com, that's all encompassing. That's not one blockchain. That is, when I think of NFT.com as a platform, I think of a platform that will, through interoperability or otherwise, be able to establish a marketplace for NFTs across multiple blockchains, not just one. That is what is going to have to, in my opinion, that's ultimately what's going to set this apart from everything else out there and take the world by storm. It's almost like, uh, you know, spokes on a rim. You know what I mean? You, you've got the center nut, but you're going to have all these different spokes that lead to all these different worlds and it brings it all together under one platform. And of any domain, any any site that I've ever heard of, NFT.com is definitely going to be the one that should be able to bridge those gaps. Obviously, I've been a longtime proponent of, of Cardano since 2017. I was one of the first YouTubers to ever even really talk about it when everyone else was trying to FUD it because they didn't want their Ethereum bags to go down, right? Yeah. And, and we still deal with a lot of that stuff today with some of these other like VC-driven, uh, you know, layer one platforms and so forth. So I see it all the time. But one of the key elements to uh, one of the reasons why I'm so big on Cardano is the interoperability. And through the tools that they're releasing, to enable people to literally you got an ERC20 application and you want it on Cardano, boom. Now you just you can you can pipe it right through and you can start running it on Cardano. A lot of these things are getting ready to come out. 
And I know that a lot of the other more significant blockchains out there are, are working on ways to facilitate the same things. So if you're able to funnel them all into one platform that rules them all, so to speak, uh, I, I mean, the, the value potential uh, is absolutely endless. Something tells me though, that within the next five years, I'm and I'm just gonna make a prediction because I like to make these predictions. Um, well, I don't know, because you've already pretty much done quite a bit. I was gonna say within the next five years, somebody like, you know, Elon or somebody else is gonna come through with, you know, eight figure offers to buy this thing out. If, and let's say that doesn't happen, okay? No, let's say it does. Let's say that were to happen. What happens to all of the Genesis key holders as a, as a, you know, as it's related to a, a deal like that or a merger or a takeover or anything? Yeah. So as I mentioned, we lock the domain in what we call a domain name holding company that we have control over as an organization. I can make a commitment to everyone listening to this. The domain is not for sale at any price. Elon could offer a billion dollars today. We would not sell that domain name. I think what we're building is way more valuable than a billion. Remember when Zuckerberg was offered a billion dollars? I don't remember if it was Verizon or Yahoo or who offered it for Facebook and he turned it down. And it was one of the most brilliant refusals because the guys behind Instagram didn't do it when Zuckerberg came knocking to try to buy them for a billion dollars. But Zuckerberg knew the vision of what he was building was much bigger than just the billion dollars he was selling for then. He could see the next couple of years out. Very few people can. NFTs in 2022 are like, um, let me just, let me try to equate it. It's like starting a layer one blockchain in 2017, right? It was, it, it's, it's so early. Everyone in 2017 was like, it's all going to be Ethereum. It's all going to be Ethereum. Ridiculous, ludicrous. Of course, there was going to be Cardano. Of course, there was going to be Avalanche. Of course, there was going to be Luna, Terra Money, right? Of course, there was going to be a Hedera Hashgraph. There was going to be a whole wave of people who saw what Ethereum did and was like, wait a minute, we can do this better. We can we can do this for cheaper. Solidity is not that great of a smart contract language. The Ethereum virtual machine, really? We can improve that. And it led to this entire creation. Looking at NFTs right now, the number of new entrepreneurs I meet on a daily basis that are quitting huge jobs, raising massive amounts of money and focusing on NFTs full time, new NFT unicorns are going to pop out of everywhere over the next three to five years. You're going to see them everywhere. A billion dollars right now would be way too quick of a cash out without giving this thing a chance to have legs and realize it out. It's stupid and we haven't even launched it yet. So let's launch it, let's grow this thing together and the ecosystem can't be sold. It's an open source, open life ecosystem. If Elon liked it so much, he could just fork the platform. But then again, the value isn't in the code of the platform. It's open, any of us can take it. The value is in the network effects. It's in the two-sided marketplace. Why do you use Amazon? Amazon because it's got the most stuff listed on it. And um, it's got, and, and why do people list stuff on it? Because it's got the most people buying it. It's a self-perpetuating flywheel. As long as people use Amazon, more creators want to sell stuff on Amazon, exactly. right? And as long as more people are selling stuff on Amazon, more people want to come and buy stuff on Amazon. And the flywheel goes on and on and on. It's a two-sided market network thing. Think about drivers on Uber. Why do drivers want to drive for Uber? Because they have a lot of people requesting rides. Why do people want to request wise because when you request rides you know uh, lots of drivers lots of drivers are there it's a flywheel why will people use nft.com if we can get lots of creators who list lots of people will buy if there's more people who are there to buy more creators will come to list you need to start that flywheel uh, oftentimes that requires things like token economics oftentimes that requires things like proper incentive structures right but you can't buy that, right? You can't buy the Ethereum network right now. It's not for sale. Vitalik can't sell it, right? It's open source, open license. It runs on tens of thousands of nodes all over the world. You won't be able to sell NFT.com, the community. It's not for sale. You'd like, like, tactically, like literally, I wouldn't be able to do it. So no one needs to worry about that happening. I, I, I love your answer. Man, I, I actually, you're... Talking to you and listening to you makes me wish I was actually in Puerto Rico right now to just go like have some drinks and really. I'm bummed you're not, man. And I see the BJJ shirt and I'm like, I hear that there's some like dojos around and people are, people are, there's some famous uh, guys that I've been meaning to pick up uh, BJJ and get in shape because I am gaining weight building NFT.com. I am out of shape. Being in Puerto Rico because if there's one thing that's great, there's everything that's, all the food there is so stupid good. I mean, even the McDonald's yeah. there is better. 
better than it is here. I don't even know how that happens, but uh, there's fried chicken on every corner, man. Oh man, I, mean, I know, I know it. And the Berea, the Berea. I don't, I, I never pronounce it the way it's supposed to because I sound like an yeah. idiot. Uh, but yeah. that's like those are the best. I don't, you can't even call them tacos, but those are the best things I've ever had. You dip it yeah. and all that. And, oh my gosh, it's like heaven. Uh, I gained yeah. 20 pounds on that island. I mean, within six <laughs> months, I really did. So I, I hear you. Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, I, you're building your legacy right now, and I respect that. I, I mean, I think of all of the things you've done and your accomplishments and all everything that, you know, ultimately put you in Puerto Rico. Um, I think this is going to be the big one for you. I really do. I think this is going to be Thank something you. that uh, carries your name up up into the ranks of some of these other guys you've been mentioning. And I, and I can see by just the way you're responding to these questions, you're always thinking. You're always processing answers to questions that haven't even come up yet. Uh, you'd probably be a pretty good chess player if you're not. Um, I I love I love chess. I think the thing I'd say is like you nailed it. I think you read me like a book here, and I probably wear my emotions on my sleeve a little bit too much. But um, one, you can't take you can't take the money with you, right? There's no pur- there's no purpose in being the richest guy in the cemetery. And I'm fortunate enough to have like an unbelievable amount of financial freedom and anything you know physical that I want to buy. Like it's just it's not about that anymore, right? I've got the toys. I can you know I can live in Puerto Rico, and you know my family's taken care of, um, and then it comes to, okay, so what does it all mean? Right. You're born and you die. And I'll just get existential for a question, but like, what if it's, you know, the measure of a man or a woman is what they do with the time in between from birth to death. And I think I'm going to work forever. I get really, I, I, I'm, I can't sit on the beach. I've actually like never been in this. I've never been to this beach right here. <laughs> I've, I'm not kidding. I've lived in I Puerto Rico you. for almost I've been, I've been in Puerto Rico for three years. I've never been to that beach. Mm-hmm. Um, and I almost never go in the water. I'm like pale. I, I'm never in the sun. I'm in this office all day long. And I asked myself, like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And the two things I always wanted more than money um, were always want a seat at the table. You mentioned Elon. I've not met Elon directly, but those in the H bar community know that like, I've got to talk to his brother, right? I've gotten to talk to his family. Um, I've gotten to, you know, build these kind of relationships and you only get in those rooms by having some kind of accomplishment, by building something really great that people are intellectually stimulated by, and they want to talk to you. So what's far better, you know, being a boy from Buffalo without a college degree with these two massive chips on my shoulder, uh, you know, having access to those people who have those degrees, who have the, you know, that intellectual capacity to ask the really hard questions, to be able to meet people like you, Jason, just to even get interviewed. No one interviewed me when I was running Buffered VPN. No one knew who I was, right? It's a byproduct of building things and taking these things to market. So that's been amazing access to people. And yeah, it would be really cool. It'd be really cool if my grandkids or my great grandkids to say, yeah, my, my granddad or my great granddad built that. He built that. It changed the world. It changed the way people interact with platforms. That would be really cool. Like beyond anything, right? Like I could have gone to be a banker, an investment banker, a stockbroker, or something like that, and make money literally just investing in companies. But I never would have built something. I would have been moving money around and allocating capital. And I don't mean to demean that if that's what you do as a profession. I don't mean to criticize that. But like, building something to make something better. I'm not launching rockets into space like Elon. I'm not making hu- like humans interplanetary. You mentioned Tesla solar panels and things of, you know, things of that nature. I'm not saving the world from, you know, a climate crisis or preventing greenhouse gas or things of that nature. But what if we could change the way we use the internet? What if the internet in its current form is flawed and we could make it better? Wouldn't that change the course of human history? Wouldn't that make people a little bit less insecure as teenagers when they're using applications that are literally addictive, like nicotine, giving them dopamine hits with notifications? Couldn't we do better? And couldn't the private sector, couldn't us as entrepreneurs be part of driving that? So yeah, I'm fired up and I'm passionate about it, but I think the legacy and the access to people that those two things keep me going. Cause I get to pinch myself on a pretty regular basis. Now, you know, I, I, I get to meet Kevin guys like Kevin O'Leary from, you know, he's on TV on shark tank, but you know, he's a big evangelist and a promoter of both me as an entrepreneur and nft.com which is unbelievable. 
you would have told, you know, 22 year old Jordan or 17 year old Jordan or 12 year old Jordan that he'd be hanging out with Kevin O'Leary. I would have told you you're crazy. Mm -hmm. So that's so much cooler than making a million bucks. I got to say it really is. I I'm still working on my, I, every time I think, Oh, I'm, I'm at a point where I, I can just do what I want and I get brought back to reality. And then I, you know, you know it, <laughs> but, but, you know, growing up poor man, single mom, all that stuff, growing up more or less in the hood when I was a kid and, you know, I, I didn't go to college or any of that fun stuff. And, and it's easy to, to, to see that fire in someone else, because when you come up, you know, I mean, uh, one of 10 kids, man, I mean, you got nothing. You're, you're fighting for every little thing you can get, Everything. you know? And, and it's like, you know, you, it, it's, it's like, I, I was an only child, but we were still, we were just, we still didn't have anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like money at some point just becomes a number that you have to use to, to, to live. But outside of that, what is life? I mean, you know, life with an abundance of money just means different problems. It doesn't mean not having it. Oh my God. Some of the wealthiest people are the most unhappy. I think a lot of people refuse to hear that. They hear that, but they don't actually digest that. Mm -hmm. And they insist on doing it themselves. And I have so many friends recently who have made 50 to a hundred million dollars in crypto over the last couple of years who are literally like clinically depressed, mm -hmm. who like, you know, it hasn't solved their problems. It hasn't given them balance. It hasn't. There? It, it, no and it's, and it's crazy. Right. Yeah. Those guys driving Lambos are upset. Their lives look fantastic on Instagram or Twitter. And listen, I, 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 I talk to somebody, I talk to a performance coach. I work with someone regularly to just psychoanalyze this. Cause if I can get this right and I know what makes me tick and I understand myself, I don't think there's any amount of money that's, you know, too much money to spend on getting this right. Just knowing, and you know, athletes have coaches. If you're an entrepreneur, you need a coach. If you're an engineer, you need a coach. You need to know what you're going for. Everyone gets in ruts. Everyone wakes up and, you know, listen, after it's, it's hard to come off of a major win like Hedera and do it all over again. Like, what is it about my brain that left after creating a protocol that's worth over $8 billion, fully diluted valuation at one point over 10, right? But crypto's correct a little bit that now wants to try it all over again. You kind of have to be a little bit sick in the head to kind of do that all over again. And people are you throw mud at me regularly. There's shit talking left and right. How do you get through all of that? Not listen to it, continue to plow forward. It takes a special kind of person, but I highly, I highly recommend, you know, focusing on your mental health, focusing on all of that. I think that's so important. And then, yeah, listen, Jason, it's so awesome to meet other people who can find something that they can relate to in that story and upbringing, because yeah, being one of 10, you operate differently. People tell me, they're like, Hey man, you can sell, you can pitch. And I'm like, you know why I can sell and why I can pitch. My mom made one thing for dinner and we had one television in the house. I had to convince nine other kids to watch what I wanted to watch and to eat what I wanted to eat for dinner. If you think I'm persuasive, it's because I did it out of survival, right? I learned how to use that to my advantage and how to talk. That became my tool. And then I realized, wait a minute, you can use this to sell other things. I can sell other products. I can become an evangelist. I can raise money. It's a pretty useful tool. I never would have had it if I didn't have my upbringing. So, you know, it was, I wouldn't change anything about the way I was raised. I wouldn't change anything about my family and any of that. I, I totally me agree. Uh, me either. I mean, it's, it's, it's what made me the person I am today and I'm quite proud of who I've become. So, uh, you know, there's no reason to change anything. I've got a lot of pains, a lot of struggles, a lot of terrible stories that, you know, only my wife really knows. Uh, but, but there are things that we have to go through to kind of make us who we are. And that's one of the reasons, honestly, I think that the universe rewards us with some of the opportunities we're presented with in life. And we're open-minded enough at that point to accept them and do something good with it. And so you know, a thousand percent, uh -huh. a thousand percent. And for anyone who thought we were talking about NFTs, <laughs> <laughs> we're also talking about life, but Hey, I think it's all intertwined. It's all interrelated. So, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Well, I mean, ultimately I think to me, it goes to the mission of what you're trying to accomplish here. This is obviously not necessarily just a, uh, you know, it's not just a project to make some money. You've done that. This is about something bigger. It's about something more, um, and, and, and I can see that I can see that that's, that's all I was. And I don't even really look at you as being, um, persuasive really. I don't feel, I don't feel like you're trying to sell me anything. I feel like you're really just trying to share a vision of what you're trying to build. And you want people to join you for the ride because that's Agreed. what you're going to get off on as much as it being, you know, the biggest platform out there. I think it's the number of people you can get involved with it. 
and you know i will say you know after doing what research i have prior to this interview and especially now after having talked to you uh and gotten inside your head a bit I'm here for it, man. I mean, you ever need me for anything, I'm here. I'd love to get involved. Um, you know, I'm always soul searching for things that that actually I think are gonna matter beyond just, you know, yeah, you make some money, cool. It helps you live your life and helps you, gives you the freedom to do the things that matter most to you. Um, and it helps you kind of open up your time to you know do yeah. what you wanna do, not what you have to do. So that's one definite luxury of 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 all of that. But uh yeah, man, I'm here. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this thing go. I want to be as big a part of it as I can be. I'm, I'm on board. So um, I love it. So maybe to close it out, like April 26, if you liked any of this, um, April 26, that is four, what is that? Four days from now. Wow. Four days from now, maybe three days from now, depending on when you're listening to this. Um, if you go to nft.com, you can join the allow list or the white list. You put in your email and your Ethereum address and then join discord and follow us on Twitter. You'll be able to be whitelisted. Um, and you'll be able to bid on a Genesis key. Uh, we're a fully docs team. My team, um, my team is far more impressive than me. So, um, you know, go take a look at who they are. They've done some unbelievable things. Uh, and, uh, yeah, join the community, poke around, ask us questions, challenge the model, but you know, these Genesis keys, we're excited to get them out and kind of birth the Genesis of this entire, this entire ecosystem. Absolutely. And I mean, guys, like I said, I'm going to be as big, I'm going to be in the communities. You're going to see me in there chatting, talking, throwing in a million ideas, doing whatever I can to help this thing. Um, I'm going to be here. Hopefully you guys join me. If you get a Genesis key, let us know. I want to know, like, if you end up with one, let me know in the comments of this video, what are you planning on doing with it? Uh, and, uh, as more news and updates and things come about, um, we're definitely going to talk again. I mean, no matter what, we're definitely going to be talking again. Uh, and, uh, definitely. yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, until next time, guys, thanks for joining me, Jordan. You've been a real treat, man. I mean, you've really been the highlight of my, I don't know, since we moved to Florida, I really enjoyed this quite a bit. And uh, look Same forward here. to talking to you again soon. NFT.com, bookmark it. Go check it out. Go whitelist yourself. And uh, I'll see you all soon. Until next time, guys, thanks for joining us. Crow your coins.